a couple of years ago, because you were here with Crazy Horse, it wasn't last year, was it? Two years, two years ago. Yeah. And La Danse? Uh, four years, four years ago. ago. Yeah. Right. I, I was on a little crusade in Rome trying to get La Danse distributed by somebody in Italy. Because yeah. I was, I mean, I, well, I, I liked it, to put it mildly. Yeah. And I'm a great admirer of yourself. Oh, well. And uh, the uh, lady in Paris sent me a copy, which I have sitting on myself very proudly, but unfortunately no one was... Uh, the duration. Yeah, well... Do you, have you ever attempted to do a, a concise... No, that's the wrong word. Well... Well, a bridge I mean, version for people who can't have, don't have no because it wouldn't be the same movie. No, I mean I make the movie the way I think it should come out and fuck them. I mean, if they want to run it, great. If they don't, have, any, have people ever tried to persuade you? I mean, your your distributors or your, your well, they ask me, but they know that I'm hard ass about it, so they don't, you know, they don't go into any great lengths because I mean it it would be a, it's a completely different movie if I. Uh, are you shooting in the... Yeah, for the record, we're now recording. Yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, it, it, if I cut it, it wouldn't be the same movie. I mean, I remember many years ago, I did a movie about Army basic training. And it was 90 minutes. And, and, and it was 84 minutes. And CBS wanted to run it on 60 minutes. If I'd cut it down, you know, and they offered me a lot of money. And I said, no, because, you know, it would be a different movie. You know, to cut 23 minutes out of it would, or you know, we could, it was all the commercial breaks and all that, it would have been closer to 30 minutes. Uh, I, I just had no interest. I mean, I worked very hard to establish the form and the themes of the movie. Uh, and uh, if I thought it worked at a, in a shorter time period, I would have made it that way. Did they always end up at 220 something minutes? No, no, no. There's a, no, no, no. There's a whole bunch uh, that are around between 80 and 90 minutes. There's one that's 73 minutes. Uh, there are another group around two hours, another group around three hours, two or three around four, and one at six. When did you first be become interested in documentaries? I mean, as a even as a child watching them on TV, I will you know, be on TV. <laughs> well, no, not on TV, but as a child, I watched in, uh, I, I, uh, I watched the Second World War on newsreels at my neighborhood theater um, in Boston. Uh, so, uh, but even before that, I used to, my father, I used to go to the movies a lot with my father, even in the 30s, and we'd see newsreels, and I remember, I remember quite vividly the newsreels of uh, Hitler's speeches and his rise to power and all that. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I uh, during the Second World War, or it actually started before the Second World War, the Time magazine had a weekly uh, film newsreel called March of Time. Uh, and I watched that quite a lot as a child. And from there? Well, I, you know, I'm there. I mean, in a sense, I'm, I mean, I, I can't say there's a direct connection between watching that and making documentaries. But, you know, I was, inter you know, I found that fascinating watching that. But were you interested in photography? Were you interested in wanting to make films? I, 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 I was it? interested in photography and I wanted to make, you know, I wanted to make films. But I, you know, I, and I lived in Paris for a couple of years in the late 50s and went to the Cinematheque a lot. And then I went back to America got a job that I didn't like, and I reached the witching age of 30 and figured I better do something I liked. And so I started working movies, and I, first thing I did was to work on the production of a feature film that was half documentary. Um, and that sort of uh, demystified the process of filmmaking for me, basically because I thought if the people uh, I was working with could do it, I could do it. Uh, and so I then started to make my own movies. Uh, and I, and I, I chose to do documentaries because I, mean, I, I, my, uh, I started working at a time soon after the discovery of uh, the possibility of shooting sync sound documents, 16 millimeter documentaries. Uh, and it sort of opened up, it basically opened up the world as a subject for a film. Uh, and uh, so 
and, and, and I, I'm not the first to discover there's a lot of uh, drama and sadness in ordinary experience. No, I mean, it's, 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 truth is stranger than fiction, isn't it? Well, cliche. Uh, well, but I mean, there's a lot of great material, and, and the technological developments made it possible to shoot it. How long will a roll of 16 millimeter last? 11 and a half minutes. And every 11 and a half minutes, you, you have, have to have change. To change. But you, you, the magazines were such you could change in about 20 to 30 seconds, because you always had a, a magazine loaded, and they're cartridge magazines. So uh, it was just a question of lifting one off and putting the new one on. Do you think the advent of these things um, helped or hindered shooting on film required a discipline that shooting on video? Well, I, I you know, I, I, you know, at the risk of sounding arrogant and uh, pretentious, I think the, the major consequence of the digital revolution was that more lousy movies will be made. So the whole, you know, the freedom for more people to... Yeah, I mean, it, it, making a movie requires more than just, you know, aiming a camera at somebody. Like, such as? Mm -hmm. To play devil's advocate? Um... Well, no, I mean, it, it, it requires uh, uh, knowing something about exposure, knowing some, some, something about the framing, uh, uh, knowing something about camera movement, uh, uh, recognizing uh, uh, the implication of what it is you're shooting, um, and then there are all the issues connected with editing. But uh, not everybody can pick up a camera and be a filmmaker. And the the you know everybody thinks they can, or many people think yeah. they can. These things are certainly given the idea to a great many people. You just press the red button and you're off. Yeah. Right. Um, when you start filming in the, is it true that you go in with very little preparation? Very little preparation, because I think the shooting of the film is a research. And since I don't stage anything, there's no point in spending too much time there in advance, other than to get a sense of the geography and the centers of power, uh, because nothing is repeated anyway. So all I try to do in advance is get a sense of the place. And I can do that very quickly. But OK, in the case of like Berkeley, what attracted you to Berkeley? Well, I, I, what attracted me to Berkeley is I, want, I, I thought a movie about a university would be a, a nice addition to the institutional series I've been doing, because all my documentaries are about institutions of one sort or another, police, hospitals, schools, etc. So that's one thing. And I went to Berkeley because it's a great university, and it's also I, I was interested in choosing a public university. So the combination of it being uh, one of the best universities in the world and also public is what led me to it. Uh, and then I, I w uh, inquired of the chancellor as to whether he would consider it. And he told me to come out and see him. And we had lunch. And he said, OK. So you actually, you, you, regardless of where you're going into, you, you, you have no agenda yourself. I have no agenda. I, I, don't, I don't. My only agenda is to, you know, a year later, have a good film or what I think is a good film. Have you ever gone into a situation, done all the filming and come out and there was... No. Why not? How, is that, how has that never happened? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody would disagree with me. Uh, maybe you know, somebody who doesn't like one of the films would say that it has happened. Uh, uh, but it, it hasn't happened to me. I, mean, I don't care what other people think. You clearly don't care what other people yeah. think. But from your perspective, you've always managed to get... I've always managed to, whenever I've... Uh, done a film, uh, you know, I, whenever I was, with one exception, whenever I've started a film, I've finished it. The one exception is I started to make the film that became Law and Order in Los Angeles, and I, after a week of riding around in the police cars, they told me I got kicked out, basically. They told me I could do whatever I wanted except ride around in the police cars. And since there were no foot patrols, that rather limited the story. Uh, so I left Los Angeles and went to Kansas City. But that's not a choice that I made on my own. I simply couldn't shoot there anymore. Are you surprised by the outcome? The Which outcome? Film? The film. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm always surprised yeah, by it. Yeah, because, I mean, I think the final film is an expression of what I learned as a consequence of having the opportunity to make the film. Uh, so I'm always surprised by it because... Uh, I, uh, I don't know all that much about the subjects to begin with. In some cases, I know nothing about the be to begin with. But 
the chance to make the film is also an opportunity to study the subject. For instance, at Berkeley, I had 250 hours of rushes. So, I mean, it means I ended up, uh, it's a four hour movie, so I ended up using 1 60th of the material. I mean, it's, four so times. The, so the other 59 60ths, is that thrown out? Well, no, it's not thrown out, but it's in the archive, yeah. Do you, ever, do you ever go back and look at other material? Or no, is, what's no. The, so really no, no. I mean, I, I've looked at it so much. Uh, in the course of the editing, I, you know, I, I, I look, uh, I start the editing by looking at everything, and then I pick the sequences I want to edit, and I look at those, and I edit those, and then after I've edited everything I think might be in the film, I go back and look at all the rushes all over again, in case there's something I forgot about that might be useful. In fact, by the time you finish with the project, you can't know what was, what was everywhere. Yeah, and, and you know it better than anybody else because you know the material. Yeah. What would you, these are, these are dreadful questions, what would you say to an aspirational young documentary filmmaker? Marry somebody you, rich. You said, would you say that, talk to over you, would you say that again? <laughs> Marry somebody rich. <laughs> That's it. Do you, do you like modern documentaries? Well, I mean, I, I can't say, you know, I, I don't generalize. I, it's the same, I mean, the same way, you know, do you like, somebody asked me, do I like novels? I like some novels. Well, right, the last 10, 15 years has been a sort of, there's been something's happened. I mean... Well, there are a lot more documentaries being made, but, I mean, you know, it's it, like uh, with plays or novels or poems, some are good and some aren't. I mean, the, the so-called interest in documentary, there's a lot of, I think, bullshit connected with that, because most documentaries still don't get much theatrical distribution, and very few make any money. So, uh, I mean, the, the ones that make money are things like Michael Moore's movies. Uh, what do you think you've learned? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, well, in a sense, what I've learned is what you see in the films and the difference between the early films and the later ones. I mean, I think I know, I, I think I know, I may be wrong, but I think I know much more about how to make a movie now than I did in the beginning. Uh, although, I, you know, I think I know a little in the beginning, but uh, I'm much, uh, you know, I'll give you one example. Uh, it's, it's a minor example, but an important one. I know how important it is to collect cutaways. Uh, which I didn't know in the beginning. I mean, or I knew it not in the same way I know it now. I mean, cutaways within a sequence and cutaways to be used between uh, the sequences. Uh, because you can't really compress a sequence unless you have shots that allow you to cut it down. And, and you often need uh, transition, lots of transitional shots for moments of silence or pauses or quiet moments or whatever between major sequences. So, I mean, that's one very simple thing that I learned. And there's your advice to aspirational young documentary filmmakers. Oh, well, that, that's, <laughs> that's another matter. <laughs> Mr. Wiseman, sir. The privilege. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for doing the interview. Indeed. Okay. Many compliments for the latest one. Thank you. And I wish we had PBS. Mm. PBS were better than it is. Well, the fact they're still there is already quite a miracle. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> absolutely. Well, they, uh, the right wing keeps trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to go down that road before your young lady? <laughs> no. If we start going down that road, no. we could be here for a while. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. And, um, thank you. you very much. Thank you for coming back this morning. Thanks. I missed you yesterday yeah. afternoon. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Oui. C'est ça notre troisième. Oui, oui, c'est ça.